Hello everyone and welcome to the launch of a Star Destroyer around Kerbin in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. This Star Destroyer was built around a cargo bay that was supposed to hold 12 TIE Fighters. I built the TIE Fighter first and then decided to move on to build something that could sort of carry it. Um, this Star Destroyer was built around that cargo bay, a Mark III cargo bay, and then I sort of piled on procedural wings, B9 procedural wings, and then a whole lot of lackluster lab spars. The engines are three rhinos which were scaled up because rhinos are too small in this case and there are also ion engines from lackluster labs on the tail there. But you can see um, basically the wedge shape is made by the procedural wings and then the filler is lackluster labs parts. There are a lot of tanks in, in the middle of the body and uh, here this uh, bridge section is a lackluster lab part as well. Lackluster labs is a great mod if you want to build sci-fi spaceships. As you can see, the windows, all, the whole island structure is basically lackluster labs. And so I've made the little, oh, procedural parts also played a part here. So this is obviously not a fully stock craft, but we are launching around Kerbin uh, as a first try. I eventually want to make a Star Destroyer around uh, Earth in Realism Overhaul, but that might take more doing. So the back panel is also a wing piece. I basically crossed my fingers that the aerodynamics would work out and not cause havoc. This is the TIE Fighter and I built it around a dirt pod from the colonization mods, the USI colonization mods. And basically it's got procedural tank that's surrounding the dirt pod and of course the docking port on top. And then the rest of it's just B9 procedural wings and then the ion engines on the tail. TIE as people have constantly reminded me, stands for Twin Ion Engine. So we have to have two ion engines. And actually it gets pretty good thrust given that. That's because the cockpit and overall structure is very light. The next step was to test the structural integrity of the Star Destroyer. So that's what I'm doing here, just making sure it's sort of stable with auto strutting and everything, of course. And you hear the music, that's from OC Remix at ocremix.org test just to make sure that things don't fall apart because of the thrust from the engines and probably at instigation from viewers because of course this was during a live stream that I did all this I, uh, I eventually decided to release the clamps and uh, this Star Destroyer does not have a thrust weight ratio of 1 so of course it went down and A very spectacular explosion, I think. Well, now we know what happens if a Star Destroyer, well, sort of does that. We really need anti-grav units, but those have proven a little bit tricky from Kerbal Foundries. There is a mod for anti-grav units, of course. So the question is how to launch it. I The initial idea was to put boosters on the side, but I had already uh, done these launchers because uh, somebody who had watched my Realism Overhaul series liked the Nico 2544 and wanted to see a sort of stock version of the Nico 2544 using the stock engines. Now, of course, uh, it's still procedural parts, but stock engines in it. And so I had built that already in a previous stream and decided to try and put two of them in order to launch this. Uh, technically within the capabilities of the launchers, that's 50 vector engines at the bottom. So quite a lot of thrust, quite a lot of lag because of the 50 engines. And you can see how much effort they're putting into this, slowly pushing it up. Of course the Star Destroyer itself has some fuel. But it doesn't have the thrust to weight ratio to lift itself up, and also not a whole lot of delta V. It is very heavy, and this is now about to flip, of course. Remember the aerodynamics? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the best way to lift up anyway. And we see serious disassembly happening. Sometimes I think I just build stuff like this to watch it explode. I mean, it'll happen, but also I want to see it in orbit too, so. Uh, we do try again, uh, because 
I, I just find this an interesting way to launch a Star Destroyer. But I did have the idea of, you know, dual boosters on the side in my head anyway. Eventually, I was convinced to turn to that instead. Here I was simply trying to go straight up as much as possible, but even though I was trying to hold it straight vertical, it decided to flip on me. And... This one took a while to explode. It's always interesting to see one of the boosters fly off there. Some, some of the parts might have um, reached space. Most of them did not. Yeah, they're still going. And so is the booster. Okay, well anyway, down to uh, a more a more reasonable way of launching this and so you see two huge side boosters each with 25 of the vector engines so again with 50 total and I didn't feel like we were going up enough you know uh, we didn't have the right thrust to weight ratio with 50 so I slapped on some boosters and I think those are from Venstock revamp I forget these super boosters you see them in my colonization series, too. Uh, something has gone wrong. Yep. Some, some things have not ignited here. And so it went down. the camera's having a lot of fun trying to pick what to actually focus on because by the time it focuses on something that thing explodes okay well let's try that again with everything working Okay, it's going up now. And... Things are not working out. The reason it didn't work out this time, I know, is because I didn't have gimbling turned on on the boosters. Um, I had copied an engine, you know, the vector engines, um, on the other boosters, the one that, ones that were on the bottom of the Star Destroyer. I uh, had locked the outer ring and I had copied one of those engines to make these boosters and so none of these engines had gimbling. So total lack of control kind of thing. And the results were quite uh, spectacular. You can see the row of four SRBs going off there. Uh, I tried to separate the huge boosters and it turns out they do separate cleanly so we do have a booster separation test that worked. Um, pretty impressive. Um, it looked like that that wing panel right there needs to be strutted up. And again, of course, the Star Destroyer doesn't have the thrust weight ratio to save itself. So... It tends to disassemble quite decisively. It doesn't leave too many parts behind. The booster, on the other hand, you'll note, uh, did leave a little cluster of engines at the bottom on the ground there. So we have a little vector engine garden. Well, we can recover those at least. Okay, so now with added gimmick. Still a fairly slow rise, but you sort of have to take a look at the uh, delay in the clock. Pretty impressive that uh, with all the optimization and of course a new computer, it still has this delay with this particular craft. Gives you an idea how intense this thing is. But anyway, it definitely worked better this time. 
we did not like the engines on the Star Destroyer. And here we go. Basically getting to the target apoapsis and then separating the boosters. I forget what those little SRBs are called, but we are using SRBs as separatrons here. And you can see that's probably a good idea, they don't exactly separate very quickly. Running the engines, the three rhinos, three upscaled rhinos, I discovered that they weren't quite thrusting through the center of mass. And that's probably because I placed them before I put the bridge section on. So that unbalanced the Star Destroyer and uh, meant that the engines were misplaced. But anyway, I tried to make do. We didn't have too much to do here because it just has to boost, boost its periapsis a little bit. But here, uh, using it, it's gonna start flipping the other way. Probably if I had kept it to a lower thrust, it would have been able to handle it. Anyway, after struggling with it for a while and at some point burning in completely the opposite direction that I wanted to, uh, I just decided to coast to Apoapsis, and here it is. It's looking quite, uh, quite convincing, I think. Yep, and uh, here we are, trying to make orbit, and once again, flipping. I'm not entirely sure why I decided to go with full throttle all the time instead of just. Probably it was because I was tired. Lots of building. Anyway. We have definitely made orbit, so that is a success. Star Destroyer in orbit, so we must get a TIE Fighter to it. The trouble was, I mean, I would have liked to have just put the TIE Fighters in the bay already, but for some reason the way I built it, it couldn't be sub-assembled. And that was very annoying. So, lacking the ability to make it into a sub-assembly meant that I couldn't put it in the bay, and I couldn't use the merge function either. It uh, tended to crash the game when I tried to either make it a sub-assembly or use the merge function. So, we launched it separately. I didn't launch 12 of them, I just wanted to dock one in the bay for now. You know, the solar panels because ion engines and all, so... We are fairly well powered, I think uh, around Kerbin it can do two-thirds thrust with as long as uh, its solar panels are facing the sun the right way. And two-thirds thrust gives it a thrust weight ratio of over 0.2. So it's not, it's about, you know, centaur-like uh, thrust levels. It's not horrible. And here we are approaching the Star Destroyer. And you can see the cargo bay open with the slots for 12 TIE Fighters. Actually, I think one of those struts is obstructed by the parts I put in the front and so it can't really fit 12. Of course the real Star Destroyers are much larger so this is a baby Star Destroyer I will readily admit but uh, to make anything bigger we would have to have bigger facilities and we do not have those. We do not have... Uh... oh wait we've got a bit of an issue here even though the Infinite Robotics hinges had folded those things the right way to fit in the fairing now for some reason the hinges were folding the wrong direction, outwards instead of inwards. I wanted them to fold inwards so that the TIE Fighter could fit in the bay a little bit easier, though I don't think they do that. But yeah, I, uh, because that was happening, I had to keep those, I don't know what you want to call them, fins, foils, uh, solar panel arrays. Uh, I had to keep them straight, which is fine. I think they do remain straight when docking. And it turns out it fit just fine. We got magnetism, it got in, it didn't bump anything. I checked the clearance and it did have clearance, you can see it there. So yeah, Star Destroyer with a TIE Fighter. So that was uh, just a Saturday stream and I think it turned out fairly well. I will endeavor to make one in Realism Overhaul with the Interstellar pack. So KSP Interstellar and that'll be in the Interstellar Overhaul series and should be very interesting. I don't know what real practical functionality a Star Destroyer would have in that case, but it would at least look great. 
So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.